High Revs Media is sponsored by Born to Ride Motorcycle Magazine. Check out borntoride.com. So we're on our way uh, in the truck and uh, kind of figured we were going to have an issue with it. This thing is uh, slowly getting diesel in the oil. I've changed the oil now a couple times and been and then kept an eye on it and it's, it's for sure doing it. Now it does not have the same symptoms of a leaking injector. It could be, but uh, it could be the housing leaking into the uh, valve cover. Um, which is, you know, a common problem with some of the earlier ones. Uh, I imagine these have been changed at some point in time. This engine was supposed to have been rebuilt last year. Uh, what I think it is, is the return line. If they used the original return lines or didn't replace all those seals, uh, it looks like that could be leaking in the head pretty easily. Uh, so we're going to go through that. I've been watching a lot of other videos uh, here on YouTube. One of those guys uh, is a Mean B. Uh, on there. I'll, I'll link his stuff below. He's got a really good video of going through each part of the uh, the rebuild on there and uh, it's uh, pretty good. There's a lot of good videos on there but, but his seemed pretty easy to follow. Um, so, like I said, I haven't worked on very much diesel stuff um, especially not in a long time. So, we'll see how it goes. Alright guys, so I got the truck in the shop and I'm gonna start tearing this thing apart. Right now we're just letting it cool down some since I just got here. But first thing we've got to do is drain the radiator, unhook the batteries, undo all this piping, get all that out of the way, get the radiator hose out of the way that unbolts from here. That'll get us down to, you know, that's all pretty common stuff. That'll get us down to where we're right above the valve covers, start taking apart all this other good stuff. Lots of wires and hoses and everything else. They completely covered this thing. Uh, and what's funny is the reason they did it is this being a 2002, 2001's when this engine came out and they got with Zuzu to make this fit in the same spot as a 454 because that was their big puller motor and they needed to have a diesel that would uh, compete with everything else. So everything's piled together and through the valley here, got the turbo up there. It's uh, everything's kind of squished together, which was uh, uh, engineering marvel at the time. But then they realized putting all of this under the valve cover is not good if it leaks. So they end up changing that, put it on the outside, like uh, every other modern vehicle. And if it was on the outside, it would still be hard to get to. But at least we wouldn't have to go into the head. And if it leaked, you wouldn't have oil. Uh, sorry, diesel in the oil rather. Uh, so, anyways, start tearing this apart. Right, so as you're tearing stuff out, what you want to do, a lot of people put shop rags in here. You could forget about them or you could lose one or even drop a nut in beside that. If you take a plastic Ziploc baggie, put it over the top, zip tie it to it, as long as you don't poke a hole in it, should be good. All right, guys, another thing you want to do is each one of these, they're probably all completely different plugs, but to make it easier for snapping stuff back together, Going right on there, right where you take it off from to make things go back a lot quicker. All right, guys, so now we've gotten down pretty far. It's only taking us about an hour, to be honest with you. Us working together, so we pull it on down, move the AC, just unbolts and literally sits over here. Um, we've got the fuel uh, filter pulled off, got the wires and stuff unplugged over here. About to move the uh, glow plug assembly, move that out of the way. And the FICOM has got a couple more bolts here and it's about to be off. 
once that's removed, I'm pretty sure we're down to the valve covers already in about an hour. Um, the more tedious work job is gonna be inside the valve cover. Um, but I think we're moving along pretty quick. All right, guys, so everything is off now. Fuel lines are off. Those two bolts got the uh, glow plug um, assembly back. So now start breaking these high pressure lines loose and then start taking out all these Allen heads to get the valve cover off. So the first thing we wanna do before we start taking anything off is get rid of all these leaves and dirt and junk and vacuum all that crap out of there. All right, guys. So this is a 19, this is a crow's foot, like a line wrench, so it comes on around instead of just being an open end wrench. But this allows you to get over the line and drop down in here to get a really good hold on that because some of these can be really tight. All right, guys, so we're down the valve covers. Um, on these, they're five millimeter uh, Allen head. So you wanna get these in there and you wanna make sure there's no crud in them and then Make sure to tap directly in there. Tapping, for one thing, helps you break them loose a little bit, so they're not too bad, but it also makes sure that you're completely seated down in there so that you don't strip these out. And then they just come right out. All right, so the upper valve cover is tough to get off. You gotta pry it off, couple of pry spots, and uh, make that happen. That took a little while, um, but we're down to uh, at least seeing inside here a little bit, so that's kind of nice. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Take some air pressure, rubber tip, put it up in the line, and see if we get anything leaking back, and so we can see, at least find out where our leak is. I feel like it's probably one of these return lines, and what's this? Look at that uh -oh. geyser. Yep. Right here. Look yep. at it. Right here. Look at it. I think we got it on the <laughs> yeah. camera. Look at it. See it? Just a little bit of air pressure. You can see it blasting out of there. So all the, the whole problem with this truck is that the little seal that goes on top and bottom of this return line, that thing's pouring out like a geyser. So when it's got uh, thousands of pounds of pressure on it, I'm only putting 80 pounds of pressure on it. Think about how much, oil, how much diesel is oh, coming yeah. out of that end of the oil. That's a lot. And as far as we can see, that's the only line. But I had a feeling that it was the return line because we're not making white smoke and the truck doesn't run bad. It's just making oil. <laughs> so that is it. That makes me feel a lot better about it. All right, guys. So now that we figured out that definitely this side is leaking on that return, and all of this looks new. The injector cups in there actually look new also. Um, you can see that uh, these injectors have definitely been replaced before, um, which after this many years, it, you know, probably would have no matter what. But if you look, kind of see down in here, you can, you can see the edge of the injector down in here. And the injector, if you look right past this, down in there against the bottom of the head, you can see the injector cup is uh, is shinier. So you can see that shiny, um, it's really hard to see on camera. If I can zoom in some here. Uh, but see how shiny that is down in there, right next to the injector? That's the stainless cup. So these have already been replaced uh, down in there. So this side's not leaking and everything looks good. So we're gonna clean it up and reseal it, start getting it back together. Um, this side, the return line even looks new. We're gonna make sure it's good um, and then get new seals on there, replace the return line if we have to, because uh, I've already got the new ones. Uh, and then I'm, we're not gonna do the injectors. Um, we're gonna get to pull this cover on down to do that and then get it back together. But the injectors and the cups and all that look like they're fairly new. None of that was leaking, didn't have a lost power, didn't have any white smoke. So I think this is gonna be the easiest way for us to go because if we decided to do that we're looking at adding another you know few hours maybe four or five hours just to get down to those when we got down to here pretty quick and we can get this back together i think pretty quick 
All right, guys, so got the lower uh, valve cover off and uh, it, it does just fall right off uh, as soon as you get all the bolts out. Uh, the top is definitely a lot harder. So these bolts, some of these things were awful and kind of got to get it lined up with the five millimeter and then literally tap it in with a hammer, get it all the way sunk down in there. Um, I'm gonna have to replace some of those or all of them. But I loosened these up, these two bolts, to get this up out of the way so I could get that off. And since I'm not pulling any of that, uh, I don't have to get rid of that. Now I've just gotta take out these five bolts, there's four for here and there's one that goes into the back of the head back there. Those gotta come off to get that return line out. All right guys, back on the passenger side, gotta get this mating surface here cleaned up. It's not too bad. Already got the other side cleaned up. Uh, and it looks pretty good. And then we've got some of this new Permatex, which is a 90 minute Permatex here. And it's the gray for high torque and high vibration, uh, which is what you want. But 90 minutes, so it, it'll seal up pretty quick, which is awesome. All right, guys, so the RTV is on. You can see some of it squeezing out there. So you tighten down the bolts, and I did get new bolts. Tighten it down to the start squeeze the uh, RTV starts squeezing out just a little bit, and then you wait an hour, and then you tighten them on down to torque. So, and then this was the 90 minute stuff. So you wait 90 minutes after that, and it's supposed to be good to go. All right, guys. So the next thing you're gonna do, you got all that tightened down. Put the high pressure injection lines on. There is uh, there's complementing ones, but there's one for each cylinder. Um, so you've got one, three, five, seven. The other side has two, four, six, eight. So this is a one and an eight because the heads are literally the same flipped around. So that'll go back in there like that. And up here at the end, what I'm gonna do is put some of the seal glide on there, just silicone grease, just to make it slip through the rubber here, to keep this rubber condition, be good. Uh, so on the return line, remember it was leaking right here, and you can kind of see a spot where the, the rubberized coating was gone. It was like the brown, that was gone. That's where it was spraying out of. Now the clear, uh, the, clear the, the uh, uh, clean spot beside it is where I click, you know, flaked off some more of this, this stuff. It's just gotten, gotten hard, but that's where it was leaking was that brown spot, and it had been leaking that way for a minute for sure. Um, and probably just pro progressively getting worse. Uh, so you've got a few of these seals, they call them gaskets, but that will go on there. These four go on here and there's a big side and a small side and the small side goes on the bottom, big side goes on the top. So, and I left all these on there so I would know exactly which way to put them. All right guys, this side is fully back together. I went in and finished it, I wanted the fuel system back so that I could blow more air in these, both sides, and not have anything blasting out of there. I tried it and it blasted out of there. So I wanted to be able to check with a little bit of pressure on that, sprayed some uh, some thin oil on there, see if it was gonna uh, bubble up. It never did, so everything seems good. Um, now we've got the lower valve cover back on and the new bolts that we put in there. These are all hex head, the new bolts, because those pounds are awful. Um, got them at true value, fairly cheap. And cleaning up the upper, about to squirt on the RTV and get that sealed up on there. And then give it an hour, tighten it on down and then finish this side, which should go fairly quickly. All right, guys, everything is back together now. Everything's hooked up, we hope. Everything's all hooked up. Um, so we got everything, uh, put new fresh oil in it, put water back in there. I primed the pump a bunch of times, let it off, and then I pumped it again, gave it a little while, pumped it some more. So I pumped it until I couldn't pump it anymore. So hopefully we got plenty of fuel going through it, maybe it'll fire up pretty easily. Sometimes these things have a really hard time starting after not having anything in them. So here goes nothing. Like I 
still gonna be mad at me. We'll give it just a second here. Don't get the starter too hot. And we'll try it again. down on that pump as I'm turning it over and see if we can help it get pumped in. Time to get out and play. Amsoil delivers the ultimate protection for your vehicles and equipment. Fast, free shipping right to your door. Spend $100 and shipping is on us. Order now at amsoil.com.